Hey gear seekers, I'm Nick. You're not gonna watch this video, I already know that, but the Asus Chromebook Plus CX34 is not what you think it is. Over the last decade, Google's really tried to push its way into the operating system market with their Chromebook devices to pretty large success. Quite often, you can find them being used in education and schools and those kind of uses. My nephews even use these type of Chromebooks for school work as well. But here's the thing though, the Chromebook Plus isn't just any other Chromebook. It's a Chromebook, but faster, and also more expensive with a stack of much steeper than usual minimum system requirements. Well, at least for a Chromebook. Underneath all that is something interesting, and it's hiding right under the hood. It's Linux. The Asus Chromebook Plus CX34 is a Linux laptop with a twist. Look, here's the deal. Any laptop can be a Linux laptop. It's just how it's done here that I find interesting. The other thing is I've seen a stack of reviews of these new Chromebook Plus laptops and the thing almost everyone doesn't do is actually try to use this thing. I'm not in the business of copying and pasting reviewers guides into ChatGPT and getting it to spit out something generic and you know, anyone can do that. I wanna use things to see what they can actually do. And I've been properly tinkering with the CX-34 for about a month, and I've made some pretty interesting discoveries. The Asus Chromebook Plus CX-34 starts at around 399 USD, or around about 869 Aussie dollars, but the configuration that we're showing here is quite a bit more expensive, coming in at around about 1,029 Aussie dollars. Right, okay, that's the first thing. But what does the plus mean? First of all, the plus means plus the price. These Chromebook Plus laptops also have quite different minimum requirements to classify them as a Chromebook Plus. Typically, you're looking at a laptop with a 12th gen i3 or a Ryzen 7000 APU as a minimum. As far as the specs go on this one, this one is a little bit higher end than the other Chromebook Pluses that you'll see. This has got the Intel Core i5-1235U. It's a 10 core CPU with two P cores and eight E cores and 12 threads. This one's got 128 gigs of eMMC storage and eight gigs of RAM. And as laptops go, it sounds pretty conservative because realistically it is. The CX-34 has a pretty nice 14 inch 1080p display, which to be honest at 14 inches, I thought was a bit higher than 1080p because of the pixel density. And the peak brightness here is around about 250 nits, which is adequate. It's got these tiny little teeny speakers. See how bad they sound? <laughs> Despite that, full wireless connectivity, it's got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. It's got HDMI, two USB Type-C ports, a headphone jack, and two USB Type-A ports. And I can't believe in 2024, USB Type-A is now a feature. <laughs> Battery life is pretty average at around about four to five hours of moderate use with the internal 50 watt hour battery. Let's pop it open and see what's under the hood. Something pretty interesting that I discovered here that you're about to see. There's a bunch of screws to get into the back. There's not a lot to see in here. There is something I wanna show you guys, but you will notice that Asus has one of these stickers over one of the screw holes, basically saying, if you open this up, you're gonna avoid the warranty. Do it anyway if you wanna get in. If it, and if they don't want any warranty, don't listen to me. You can't just pop the back case off. You need a spudger or a guitar pick or something to pry the plastic open. Don't use a metal screwdriver to do this because you will damage the casing. But I've been in here a couple times. And basically this, this spudger that I've got that I use for other random tinkering things that I never show on the channel works just fine. Most of the casing is popped off. So what we're seeing here is a pretty unremarkable Chromebook in terms of the hardware inside here. We do have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card right here with the antennas connected here. The heat pipe is a single heat pipe with a single blower fan design here. Pretty average sized heat sink, but this is like a 15 watt chip or something ridiculous. You can also see that 50 watt hour battery taking up a lot of the bottom of the laptop. It's quite a thin battery to remove it and replace it if you ever needed to do that. It's just three screws, unplug, and you're good to go. The 
two speakers are pretty pedestrian. They're nothing fancy. They're kind of on these floating mounts to help with making the sound better and to stop vibration as well. Now, here's the most interesting thing about this laptop. If you look closely, you'll see that there was an M.2 slot. Well, provisions for an M.2 slot anyway. It's not soldered to the motherboard, which is very odd. However, Asus thought it was uh, clever to leave the M.2 mounting post in there. Why not just release one version of it, not use EMMC memory, because it's usually pretty slow and garbage, and just use a Gen 4 NVMe drive here. Even a 128 gig one would have been adequate. So I think they just made more work for themselves. Repairability is, uh, yeah, there's nothing really to say about it because everything is soldered to the motherboard. The fact that the M.2 mounting post is there and the slot itself isn't on the board is so odd. Wouldn't it make more sense for them to leave the slot on the motherboard anyway and just not have an M.2 and use EMMC? If I had a proper soldering setup, I'd try and solder my own slot onto the board and test it out to see if it works. I think that's a little bit odd. All right, now the boring stuff's out of the way. If you haven't used Chrome OS before, it's, it's really not what you think it is. To make this easy to understand and kind of dumb it down a little bit, Chrome OS is kind of like a Linux distro with lots of features from Android with tightly integrated Google services. Basically, everything runs in a Chrome browser and Chrome OS is kind of like a hypervisor, but not really. That's just to make it easy to understand. I've used Chromebooks like this before, obviously not with this spec, and using Chrome to do everything has always been a bit of a jarring experience at first. However, for the regular user who doesn't play games and uses their computer for emails, for internet banking, and real life stuff, Chrome OS is fine. I could almost use this as a daily driver. And notice how I said almost there. Here's a few features that simply just don't work for me. My phone right here, right? This is a Google Pixel 8 Pro. This is what I use. Also shout out to dbrand for this new grip case. You can keep your 50 bucks, the case is good. Anyways, the phone integration stuff that I tried to use won't work because of how Google workspace domains are set up because the way that we use Google here is we don't use like Gmail, we use Workspace. I mean, it's like the business version. Now I tweaked a bunch of our domain settings and added a whole bunch of provisioning stuff on the back end, and it simply just won't log in. It keeps presenting me with the same password prompt to log in to get my phone to work. And it's a shame, but it's not a big deal. It's something to keep in mind if you use your own domain and you can probably get it to work, but I just didn't want to waste too much time on it. Other nifty little Chrome OS features that I really like is stuff like screen recording being built right in. It's something that I use often on Windows and Mac OS, but having a really easy way to get to it made it a lot easier to make this video. The thing is with Chrome OS, it's not terrible. It's probably just not everyone's cup of tea and that's fine. Going back to Android, like I mentioned, it doesn't run Android, it runs Chrome OS, but it is compatible with Android applications and the Google Play Store is tightly integrated with this ecosystem. So a lot of Android apps do run on the Chromebook Plus. And I say a lot because there's a bunch of things that I tested that flat out don't work. Out of curiosity, because you know I play COD, Call of Duty Mobile doesn't work. No dice. Also Warzone Mobile, which is a separate application, kind of works. You get a little bit further, but you can't play it. Most other apps like Spotify and TikTok and all the social media stuff that you're probably gonna use on your phone work fine here, but just use it on your phone. <laughs> I also tested out PUBG Mobile and it seemed to work just fine. Games on Chromebook Plus, especially the more demanding ones, are pretty hit and miss on the Chromebook Plus, I'm not gonna lie. I, I really wish COD worked because I'm a sweaty nerd. Now, there are a few creative cloud apps from Adobe that work in different ways. Google's really trying to push these new Chromebook Plus laptops for creators, but the truth is, that's not what these laptops are good at. You can download the Android version of Creative Cloud and install Adobe Photoshop Express, and you can use Lightroom and they work fine. The way Google recommends running Adobe applications on this is through the web-based versions. Again, it's a little bit jarring if you've never used it like this before, but simple things can be done fine. I wouldn't call it a great solution, but it's doable. My thing is though, just because you can do something, doesn't mean you should. 
Where this somewhat shines is for things like Adobe Express, where if you wanted to make quick Instagram posts or little Instagram videos, there's plenty of templates available. You can whip something up really quickly, but you don't need a Chromebook Plus to do that. You can do this in any browser. So I don't know, it's a bit misleading to say this is for creators when they could just do it on any laptop, but I get it because it's supposed to be cheaper than a normal laptop. Don't get me wrong though. Like there's some really interesting new features with these Chromebook Pluses. A lot of them that we see on Pixel phones and you can do them right here on the CX-34. You can check out our Pixel 8 Pro review. I'll put a link to that in the description if you wanna see some Pixel specific things. But yeah, a lot of those things actually work right here. But you know, again, it's a computer. It's not in your pocket. Here's my major problem with Google's marketing of the Chromebook Plus laptops. They don't talk about what they can really do for enthusiasts at all. A lot of the Android versions of apps are fine and they're perfectly adequate, but you just bought a computer, not another phone or tablet. What about if you want to use Discord, like the desktop version of Discord, or if you want to play a game on Steam? Well, you're in luck. You can enable what Google calls the Linux development environment. Basically, it's, it's a, a version of Debian 12 that runs in cross VM, which is essentially the Chrome OS implementation of KVM. You can use apt to install almost any packages you want. You can add custom sources to the apt repositories as well. You can also install deb packages by hand too. You can nuke the Linux environment whenever you want really quickly. You can even back all that stuff up. You can expand the storage as needed. And for me and people who love tinkering, I think this is quite handy and it's pretty competent with Linux things. The bonus here is even though it's running KVM, there's no real performance penalty. And I found that pretty interesting. So Google's done a pretty good implementation here. I guess the real question is for all the gamers out there, does it play games? Sort of. You can install Steam for Linux quite easily. It does require a little bit of tinkering, but it does work. While Steam works though, and some games work, the main issue here is the hardware just isn't that good. <laughs> it's just not. I tested both native Linux titles and Proton titles. Basically, any modern 3D titles are unplayable. 2D titles like Stardew Valley work flawlessly. Older titles like Portal or Half-Life 1 or 2 play fine. No, it cannot run Crisis. It's a dead meme. Right, can we stop with that? It's got Intel integrated graphics and you can't expect much for performance here. While some older titles and less graphically intense titles do work, many simply won't launch with Proton at all. And it's just the luck of the draw, unfortunately. And that's the thing with Proton. Some things work, some things don't. But again, this is running in a virtual machine. So, you know, it is what it is. And I didn't want to install Linux natively on here because I didn't want to fart around and tinker with it too much, but I think this is a nice solution. That's the other thing with the Chromebook Pluses though. You're not really talking about the hardware to a point. It's more about what Chrome OS can do. This is the first time we've covered a Chromebook on the channel, but it's definitely not the first time that I'm using a Chromebook. Once you've used one of these Chromebooks, you've kind of used them all. The difference here is that the ASUS Chromebook Plus CX-34 does it a little bit faster and a little bit more competent because the specs are higher. What I will say is, if you're looking for a computer for doing life admin, for internet banking, for watching YouTube, for doom scrolling TikTok, the ASUS Chromebook Plus CX-34 is perfectly adequate. I don't hate this thing. It's definitely the best Chrome OS experience that I've had so far. It's fast, it's snappy, it's competent. And it's a computer for the regular person. And for a person like me, it's got enough to tinker with to keep me slightly interested. Now, you can turn this into a properly fun little Linux adjacent laptop. The thing is though, I'm just not comfortable with the price. It's just too expensive for what you're getting. If the CX-34 had a touch screen, I would be a lot more comfortable with the price considering it runs Android apps. Just have a touch screen. Like it just makes so much more sense. But let us know what you think about these new and improved faster Chromebook Plus machines. Like I said, these laptops are not everyone's cup of tea. That's the thing with the channel though, right? I wanna show you stuff that I think you guys might find interesting, that I find interesting, and the Asus Chromebook Plus CX-34 is, it's pretty interesting to me, I'm not gonna lie, like it's a fun little laptop. It does 
all the normal computer things you needed to do. It's not fancy, it's not over the top, but it just does what you want it to do, except create content. Please let us know what you think about this type of video because I do, I, I do really like tinkering with weird operating systems. And the reason why we don't really cover PC laptops is they all run Windows and it's a little bit boring to me. Everything's just like, hey, here's another like PC laptop that runs Windows that does the thing that other normal laptops do, but a little bit faster or slower. But I like alternative operating systems for portable devices. I just think it's more interesting. That's why I use Android and not iOS, because I just find it more interesting than using another Apple phone that's been the same for a million years. Anyways, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers, you peak, we seek, and here's a clip of Bindi.